Martina from South Korea, but technically Canada, asks Jen, Jen from head to toe, what's it like being a Korean American and living in America, but then going back to Korea? Ah, it's so much, so much in one question pressure. Okay, okay, so when you were growing up, were you born here or did you move here actually? I was actually born in a suburb of Kansas City. So it was very, oh, okay, honestly, mm -hmm. there were a lot of Caucasians. Mm -hmm. So I basically grew up in a very, not a lot of diversity, not a lot of minorities area where it was mostly not Korean. Okay. At all. So then in your house, was it like a Korean style house or was it like American or a combination? Like if your friends came over, could they have anything noticeable that they'd be like, oh, this isn't like my culture? Um, I would say our home life was probably mostly Korean. I mean, both my parents immigrated from South Korea. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the foods that we ate were mm -hmm. very Korean food. My mom cooked all the time. Um, I would have liked to have been your friend and eat all your mom's homemade Korean food. <laughs> we were very, very blessed. She's an amazing, mm -hmm. amazing cook. Okay, I have a weird question for you. When I watch American dramas, I notice that Americans walk around inside the house with shoes on. But in Canada, you take your shoes off. And in Korea, you definitely take your shoes off. So were you a shoes on house or shoes off house? Definitely shoes off. I actually feel really mm. uncomfortable when I go to my friends' houses and like leaving my own shoes on. So people do leave their shoes really on in the States. Uncomfortable. Yes. Really? Yes. Like almost everyone you know or just like some people? All the people that I know that aren't Asian, I would say 90% leave their shoes on. Really? Really? Okay, yes. you guys are gonna have to tell me yeah. if you leave your shoes on or not because I thought it was like in a drama. So like when I watch Korean dramas and I see people in the house with shoes, I'm like, that's that totally- That does not happen! No, that's totally- Like you could be like in the middle of trying to stop a kidnapping and you'd be like, <laughs> and you'd stop and you'd like take your shoes off and then you'd like so run fake. into the house. That's so fake. Right? So that like, really bothers me when they run in with their shoes on. Even if I um, am about to leave and then I realize I have to like run to if the bathroom real quick that yeah. are like, it's like five feet away, you still like hurry and take your shoes off and run to the bathroom okay. and then come back and put your shoes back on. Okay, so I'm glad I appreciate that. How about when you flew to Korea? I know you told me before that you um, visited Korea like every so many years when you were growing up and such, but I know that when you go somewhere as a child, you're a kid, so you can kind of get along well with everyone, right? I know when I went to Croatia to visit my cousins when I was a kid, I didn't speak Croatian at all. My mom was like, yeah, you and the neighbors like chatted up a storm. We like had full conversations, except I was speaking English and they were speaking Croatian. <laughs> and we just were like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So when I was little and I would go to Korea, it was so easy to integrate. I grew up bilingual, so like my Korean was just like perfectly fluent because I picked it up so fast. I just like hung out with the other kids. Now, I would say it's really different because as soon as you land there, there are little things that you cannot know about the culture there, like what the exact monthly current fashion is. Korean mm -hmm. fashion like changes, changes so all fast. Um, or like how people are wearing their hair. Everybody will do their hair in a short wavy bob at the same time yeah. or long straight black hair at the same time mm -hmm. and as a westerner and you kind of have your own like way of dressing and doing your makeup and doing your hair mm -hmm. when you go there like you're immediately going to stand out there's nothing you can do about mm -hmm. it so has your family in Korea, have they been able to notice the trends? Like, or is it something that you've been able to observe on other people? So I think if you're not somebody who's really keen on fashion or hair or makeup, it mm -hmm. might actually be a little more difficult to um, sort of adjust to those little cultural mm. differences. And you might feel uncomfortable and not exactly know why. Yeah, you can't like figure out why longer. it is, yeah. Um, well, okay, I can totally understand what you're saying because Simon and I have been in Korea for like just over six years now and we can actually like sit at a coffee shop window and I could be like, that person is not a Korean. Like they're right. Korean, but they're right. Korean American. Like we'd say gyopo. Like there's a, a specific look and you really, you can't pick it out like they're wearing a pink shirt. It's something more like, so for example, if you're into hip hop in Korea, we've seen like Korean guys that are into hip hop style, but they all wear these kind of like fitted pants, like a fitted yeah. khaki or like a fitted jean. Maybe there's like a baggy crotch that's quite stylish, but the legs are very fitted. You know and what we'll, I noticed yeah. in Korea? They, the hip hop guys, they would wear those like hip hop hats yeah. with the bill flipped straight up and it yeah. says something on it. Yeah. And American hip hop no. would never. They would do, I've never seen a Korean person to this day wear cargo shorts. I mean like it's ever? never, ever, never, never happened. Like baggy, <laughs> like wide baggy shorts with a cargo pocket. That it's is not super happening. American. Yeah. It's just so small. You can't explain it. 
-hmm. But from my perspective, I'm like, that's a North American look. Right. I so think it's, it's like pretty consistent that if you're just going over there and you're a foreigner and you're visiting for a week or two, mm -hmm. you can't expect to blend in. Mm -hmm. And and that can be really actually sad and yeah. frustrating. You think it's kind of like startling because you consider yourself obviously Korean. When Simon went to Poland, he was speaking in Polish and he hasn't been to mm -hmm. Poland in a long time. And as he was asking the security guard in a mall something, the guy switched to English and said, what is it that you want to find? Oh, they definitely do the same thing. Like, oh, really? say even if you have perfect Korean, mm -hmm. except your skin is a little bit tan, because say you're like an LA Korean with perfect Korean. If you go over there, they will try to speak to you in English. Like if you're uh. trying to haggle or something like that. And that's the worst sometimes because like if you're trying to haggle, you're trying to be convincing that, that you're, you're like Korean. a Korean and yeah. you know what you're talking about and you know what things are worth. The edgemas are like totally on to you. They're just like, uh-uh, nope, I'm just gonna be like, how long are you staying? Can you like deny it? Can you be like, no, I totally live here. Um, I can't. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> like hmm. no, I'm a, I'm a terrible liar. And uh, I'm, so as soon as I'm they're on to you, you're like, haggling. especially if it's like not in English. I just like, I get so embarrassed. Mm -hmm. If I know I'm going to be like the foreigner, even if I don't like, I sometimes I'll look and dress and do my makeup like a Korean Korean and go with a Korean friend mm -hmm. and just let them haggle. And I'm just the shy one instead of being mm -hmm. the foreigner because mm -hmm. that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot more convincing if I just don't want to talk because I'm being like shy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the makeup look in Korea tends to be very simple. Even if it changes throughout the season, like, oh, peachy lips are in or like gradient lips are in, but there's always a very simple look. It's not very colorful. Right. So like uh, when I look at foreign makeup artists on like YouTube, like and the stuff that you're doing, you'll mm -hmm. be like, oh, it's the summertime. Let's do like a summer look with like different colors and you'll experiment with different kind of looks. But I'll find that the Korean look is very simple. You know, it's funny because Korean makeup isn't wearing less makeup. It's just wearing the same amount of makeup in a different way. Yeah, yeah. Korean style eyeliner is sometimes even heavier than how a lot of American girls mm -hmm. wear it, mm -hmm. especially if they're into like lighter makeup. A lot of times mm -hmm. the BB cream, mm -hmm. I've seen it be like quite thick, but oh, the yeah. idea is for it to look natural and yeah. dewy. Dewy is a word dewy that I hear all the time. That's a very Korean trend thing. Yeah. I have to say, I like my skin to look glowing, mm -hmm. but not quite as dewy as how Koreans like it. I'm on the same page because very different. dewy to me looks oily and shiny. So right. like, right when like I watch, in pictures. Like someone needs to powder that girl's nose. Like it <laughs> stresses me out. So some of my Korean American friends said that when they come back to Korea, like they speak Korean and they speak English. And on one hand, like from my perspective as well, people really look up to people speaking English because like they send their kids to English like hogwans after school and they go to English class and I was an English teacher. But then there seems to be this like level where it's like you're doing too much English and like you're forgetting about your Koreanness. So there has to be like this, almost like this balance between respecting the fact that, you know, you're Korean and you speak Korean and then yes, you're American and you speak English, but you can't like flaunt one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that there's definitely um, a difference in perception, especially if you're a Korean from Korea mm -hmm. going to, for instance, America or Canada to learn English. Mm -hmm. I feel like they don't want you to over expose yourself to a different culture mm -hmm. so that you are out of touch mm -hmm. with being Korean. So there's this whole thing we heard of where like people want to go overseas for one year, but you don't go over that mark because apparently <laughs> that's when you start meeting people, dating people, and losing your Koreanness. So you're way over that, young lady. I mean, that is- Oh my god, are you dating a foreigner? Here. Did you marry a foreigner? It's not a foreigner because I was born here. But I will say, it's it's different with Koreans among each other. I feel like there is a sense of like a national pride thing mm -hmm. where they do want other Koreans to date other Koreans and marry other Koreans. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely something I've experienced in not the nicest of ways sometimes with yeah. the internet because my husband is um, an American guy and sometimes people um, on the internet will just make snap judgments mm -hmm. and be really critical of that fact when- Oh, uh, the internet. <laughs> 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 they want to reflect their own experiences on other people's lives without actually knowing the individual story. Mm -hmm. And so in my case, like I dated my husband for like seven years before we got married and mm -hmm. we've been married for another six years. So it's definitely not like a quickie flash in the pan. I really like that phrase. Fever. Oh my God, a quickie flash in the pan. <laughs> I'm using this from now on for everything. 
it is hard for foreigners sometimes to be in Korea, but I always say it's harder for Korean Americans or Korean Europeans or because there's a perception ahead of time that you're Korean. Why don't you understand the culture? Why aren't you drinking with me? How come your Korean's like not perfect? So it can be that pressure to kind of like, I'm really sorry, like I'm trying my hardest kind of feeling, so. I think as as a kyokpo, mm -hmm. it can be hard because like you said, you feel that pressure, so you don't know what to do in those situations. Mm -hmm. You just go, <laughs> um. Okay, so that's it for our TLDR for today. I think we've covered like a lot of topics, but we still have some more things to talk about. We're gonna be talking about <laughs> it on our blog post a little bit more, so you can click on the link here to read more about it and a little bit of more Simon's stories about visiting Poland as a Poland person, but not a Poland person. It's a difficult thing. Person. There's a phrase for you being <laughs> Gyopo, but there's no phrase for you being... Unless Simon, is there like a phrase for being a Polish Canadian? Polak! Okay, so there's Polak. nothing. <laughs> if you are a Gyopo mm -hmm. or any other person living outside of your motherland, mm -hmm. what was your experience like? Like, do you relate to some of the things that we talked about? Have you ever had family visit you that was from another country? What was their experience like? Let us know down in the comments. <laughs> Yay, Jen! It's so late! <laughs> it's really late! And if by chance you're wondering how I got this uh, fabulous look here, this isn't even the entire look, okay? I had circle lenses and crazy brown hair because Jen did me as Park Bom. You can click on the video here and check out Jen's amazing tutorial on how to get the Park Bom look. Look at me, right? What is it, boy? Spudgy needs your help? What's that? Spudgy wants me to come home and touch his tummy? What about a high five? High five. Oh, <laughs> nailed it. Nailed it. Smarter than my dog. So smart. <laughs>